I'm a voice actor. I am not a graphic designer, although I've probably tried to be once or twice in my life. But I have employed graphic designers for certain projects in the past. But as a solo VOpreneur, I don't have the budget to hire a graphic designer for everything. Enter AI. Recently, my eyes were opened to the possibilities of AI image generation, and now it's something that I'm a little bit excited about and will probably spend way too much time messing around with. Uh, my guest today is the voice actor who introduced me to some of this tech, and she's here to share some tips and insights. Welcome to the show, Mandy Kay. Hi, Mark. Thank you for asking me to come on. So when my time and productivity just fall off a cliff now, I am going to hold you personally responsible because I have been spending quite a bit of time playing around with some of the tools uh, that you you introduced me to, and and it's pretty crazy. It is that is like a rabbit hole that you can just <laughs> fall way down deep in. So really let's is. let's start at the beginning. What prompted you to first start playing around with AI image generation, and when when did you start doing it? You know, my husband is absolutely infatuated with AI, and he's kind of turned into the de facto AI expert at his job. <laughs> and so he brings it home, right? Nice. Okay. And so I've been watching him do all of these really cool things, and he's always talking about what's new and what's going on. And um, when Mid Journey came out, um, probably not long after ChatGPT kind of came out publicly, um, Mid Journey came out as, well, we can do images because at the time ChatGPT couldn't. And we just had so much fun at that point, just trying to create all kinds of crazy things. And it was mind blowing, to be honest. And it didn't occur to me that this would ever be something that I could just use actually in my life. I thought it was just this fun, you know, toy. Um, but as I've been learning more about marketing, your playbook, your playbook, for example, um, I've realized that you know, AI really does have a place. It's a tool and it's a tool yep. that I should be using and I am using now and I'm still learning how to use. It's crazy to me how quickly this technology is evolving. And I think about, I mean, I remember my first radio job in 1996, my first full-time radio job in 1996. And I remember I had self-taught HTML and offered to build the radio station, their very first website and figured out how to get that website up and running. And I think about the technological advances that were happening very rapidly around that time in the mid nineties, when people were starting to build websites, do e-commerce or whatever. A lot of people talk about the disruption that the iPhone made and, and, and how that changed technology and, and changed how we worked. But I don't know that either of those things even compare to what we're going through right now with AI and how rapidly it's all developing. And there's a part of it for me that is completely terrifying, but there's also mm -hmm. a part of it that is just absolutely fascinating because the stuff that you could do that you could not do before, or most people could mm -hmm. not do before, it, it's pretty mind blowing. And the image generation side of things is is pretty incredible. So you, you started playing around with Mid Journey, you said? Yes. So what were you doing? Just making graphics just for the fun of it or just typing in prompts just to see what it would come up with? Or uh, what, what were some of those early things that you were doing with it? Mostly just typing in prompts to see what it would come up with. Um, looking for, can I create this amazing looking fairy elf thing, right? Because all of the, the ones that we're getting a lot of... Um, popularity and we're getting a lot of uh, chatter about were all of these amazing images that I wanted to figure out if I could recreate. And of course, I can't because I don't spend all hours of every day sitting on these tools, you know, iterating my prompts over and over again to get that perfect image. But it didn't make it any less fun. And, right. you know, to one of the things that we would do would, you know, try to see how it handled emotion, like, give me an image of a little girl who is sad or who is very happy and just kind of see what those facial expressions looked like to see how human AI could make an image look from scratch. Yep. And I can say it's come a long way in the last year and a half. 
It's interesting that you talk specifically about emotion because one of the things that I was doing after you, so look, full disclosure, Mandy's in my mastermind this year and in our April meeting, uh, everybody had an opportunity, everybody in the group had an opportunity to teach us something that might help us in our business. And Mandy came and talked about AI image generation. And so that's what started this whole thing for me. So I was playing around with uh, Adobe Firefly because I've mm -hmm. got a full Creative Cloud subscription or whatever. And that's one of the ones that you can do. And I, I was trying to create this image of uh, a woman sitting at her desk in her office looking at her screen confused. And it was something that I wanted to use for a marketing image for an ad that I was thinking about doing. And Firefly, for whatever reason, it just did not seem to be able to comprehend confused. <laughs> it was more like there was a, it would give me four different versions. And that one was like a happy look. One was kind of a surprised look, but it could not understand confused. And I think that's, one of the thing, I guess that's part of what happens when you're early in the technology, right? Is just trying to figure out how to put all these pieces together. So I know you're using a few different tools. Tell us which ones you're using. And then we'll talk about, are there ones that are better than others or that you think are better than others? There are definitely ones that I think are better than others. Um, and I've I've gone through using both paid ones and free ones. Um, and I'll go ahead and tell you the one at the top of my list is GPT-4, uh, which okay. is the paid version of chat GPT right now. And the reason I like that one is because you really don't have to come up with your own prompts. If you use one of the community GPTs that have already kind of pre-programmed chat GPT to do something. Um, and so I'm, I'm lazy and it just lets me be a little bit easier going. So through. when you say GPT-4, you're, that's, Dolly, right? That is that the right. That's that's Open AI, um, and Dolly is their image. Dolly's yeah. their image generation. Okay, so now to clarify, then you said you you use some of these prompts that get created or community prompts or whatever. Mm -hmm. Are using are you taking those prompts and using them in Dolly, or are you taking those prompts and using them in some of the other image generation tools that that you enjoy? No, I use those right in. Um, GPT-4. When okay. you use one of their community, um, they're called GPTs, which are basically bots that other people right. have created and programmed. Um, and so there are specific ones to gen generate images and I can go tell it, you know, give me a, a warm and cozy voice, voice actor studio and it'll generate a picture and I didn't give it any information, right? So it has to come up with what that picture is going to look like. And it takes it upon itself to do that. And then if I kind of like the idea, I'll ask it, what is the prompt that you use to generate that image? And it will tell me. And then I can take that prompt and put it in another tool if I wanted to. That's the pro trick. That's that's the pro tip right there is in in dissecting this because that's the one thing I have not used AI for a lot of image generation other than just in the last you know week or so playing around with it. But I've used ChatGPT quite a bit. And mastery of ChatGPT, as far as I'm concerned, mastery of ChatGPT has to do with prompts. It does, yes. It, it It is all about the prompts and how well you write prompts. And the better prompt writer that you are, the better results that you're going to get from the system for whatever the output is. So I love the way that you're using it to dissect because that gives you more insight into how to build better prompts for the next one. It does. A hundred percent. That's smart. See, look, now I've already learned something. Now I'm already going to be gone after this, uh, after we're done recording this interview, I'm going to be back in, I'm going to be diving deeper in. And, and that's one of the ways that I'll be, I'll be dissecting it. So GPT-4 Dolly, that's obviously you said the one of your, your top ones and, and explained why are there other tools that you're using? Um, my next favorite is one called Ideagram. So it's okay. ideagram.ai. Okay. And this is the only AI tool out there right now that can actually generate text that's not gibberish. And that's why I like it because I'm a huge fan of typography and I'm not really creative enough to just come up with something on my own, but I can tell Ideagram what I want with the words that I want. And I'll say probably eight times out of 10, it'll get the words exactly right. Sometimes it'll add like an extra S or something like that. But generally, it's exactly what I want. 
um, and it allows you, it'll generate four images, like most of them generate several. You can go in and tell it, I, well, I want to try this one again. And it'll use that image that it created kind of as the base, and it'll do a new iteration of it with something slightly changed. And I so just, this I use case it. is if, if you're wanting to do like a quote graphic, for example. Yes. So you would type in what you want the image to look like and then what this is the text that you want on the image mm -hmm. in it. Okay. See, now I tried to do that in Firefly and it created a beautiful graphic, but it didn't put any of the text in. Right. So it's interesting that there's to know there's probably some limitations on some of these different systems for what they can and can't do, or, you know, some systems may do some things better than others. So ideagram is one that I definitely have to check out because I mean, quote graphics is a big part of the thing that I do. And, and I mean, I think another application for voice actors for that would be in creating testimonials. If you wanted to create testimonial graphics and you get it to build a, an, a, a brand image or something mm -hmm. that you could use and then have your testimonials put over it. I'm assuming that you could do that. Is that. I think so. I'm, I have to be honest. I'm not, I've never tried to do something consistent. Okay. Um, cause everything that I do, it tends to be one off. Uh, but you could probably, if you have skills outside of AI with like, um, a software, like illustrator, you could probably take that and turn it into a template, turn it into a template. Yep. Use something like that or Canva. See, I'm the, when you said typefaces, I was like, I'm that guy. If I'm creating a quote graphic, it'll take me three seconds to figure out, you know, to grab a template off of Canva, but it'll take me six hours to find the perfect font. Oh, yes. <laughs> I could spend so much time messing around with fonts. All right. Any other ones that you're using? Uh, Canva. I was surprised to discover how good their text to image is. Um, but you do have to have the Canva Pro paid account for it. Um, and then the other free tool is called Leonardo.ai. And this is more recent in my toolbox. And so I haven't explored as much of it as I want to, but it is very robust and it was very exciting. Um, it even has, like, you can create your own characters in it if you upload, like, um, like a body form of what you want that body shape to be. It will take that as the base and create things for you. And it just, it feels a little bit overwhelming looking at that one compared to the other ones as far as like intuitiveness. Sure. But I can see that it can give some really high quality stuff. I have been a Canva Pro member for a long time and I am embarrassed to say that I didn't even know that you could do AI image generation in Canva until you said it in our meeting. And then mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck? How did I miss that? And so I've definitely been playing around in that a lot. And I know there are a lot of voice actors that do have Canva Pro because there's so many things that you can do with Canva. I mean, every image that's been created for my voiceover business in the last three or four years has probably been done in Canva. So playing around with the the image generation there is going to be, that's going to be fun. Time again, time and productivity going to die. But I, I, I have to think about long term once I master this, you know, the things that I'll be able to do with it. Leonardo, I was actually just listening to a podcast earlier today talking about Leonardo. And if I understood it correctly, Leonardo is it's there, it's actually a different image generation engine. Leonardo was it was built into Leonardo because the uh, the image generation um, engine is incredibly complex in how it works in its raw form. And most people wouldn't be able to do it unless you know mm -hmm. how to work in your terminal, uh, mm -hmm. apparently, which some people probably don't even know what terminal is. So Leonardo was kind of like the more user friendly interface that was built to try to make that accessible, but it sounds like it's incredibly powerful with what it can do as well. And that was one of the things that talked about, like, you know, bringing in, you know, I want an image. If you if you found an image of somebody that was doing a particular pose, you could upload the image of that pose and then have it create a new version mm -hmm. of that image, like with a different looking character or something. Is that am I am I is, is that you can't? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can, okay, yeah. that's. I thought it was Leonardo that was the the one that could do that. So that's that's just crazy too. I mean, all this stuff is really kind of blowing my mind. So, do you find? 
from some of the different ones that you've mentioned, are there strengths and weaknesses? Like if I'm creating this type of graphic, I'm going to use this platform. If I'm creating this kind of image, I'm going to use this platform because it does it better. I mean, I know you already talked about ideogram for uh, its text capabilities, mm -hmm. but are there any other considerations that we should be thinking about if we want to create a specific type of image? Maybe this is the platform that might work a little bit better. If you want photorealistic, I would go with uh, ChatGPT and Dolly. Not can Canva can do it, but it's usually going to be very highly stylized. Yeah, and so that's I noticed that not exactly you know photorealistic. Um, I've never tried to do photorealistic with Ideagram, but I don't think it can. It tends to skew very heavily to illustration okay. and typography. Midjourney is great for photorealism, um, but Midjourney, if you don't get the prompts exactly right, um, the best word I can think of for Midjourney is chaotic. And I'm not, you have to be really good at prompts to do Midjourney. Okay. And chat and mid journey is, subscription, right? Yes, you have to pay for it. So okay. I don't even have a mid journey account anymore. Okay. Um, characters, Leonardo is going to be really good at characters, but I think chat GPT can do a pretty solid job of those as well. I found with the little bit that I played around in Canva, it was definitely better. It seemed better anyway, with more of the illustrated, animated, you know, cartoony. Mm -hmm you know, more, more graphic, you know, less photorealism. I definitely noticed that. Now that's where I found though, playing around with Firefly, uh, Firefly did a really good job. I thought of the photorealism. I was just struggling to get it to comprehend some of the emotions and some of the things <laughs> now, but that might also just be a, a, my prompting, right? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, I've been playing around with this for five minutes, literally, but it's interesting to, to think, to look at, how some of these different engines respond. I wonder because they're constantly learning too. I wonder if one engine gets used more for a particular type of image, if that's ultimately going to influence the outputs on future, future images as well, depending on how it's trained. But yeah. we've talked a little bit about prompts. Prompts are the key. This, this is something that I've learned. So Talk to us a little bit about what we need to be thinking about if we are trying to create images for whatever. Say we want to create a social media graphic or something like that for our voiceover business. I know you've you've created some. So mm -hmm. talk about what kind of things we have to take into consideration with prompting. Honestly, I use ChatGPT to help me come up with what I need rather than prompting coming up with the prompt myself. Um, so there, and there are two ways to do that. One is you can actually give chat GPT the role of a prompt engineer and say, what? you are a prompt engineer, read the following prompt and optimize it for, oh, how would I word that? You know, and I guess, you know, deliver back to me a prompt that's optimized for accuracy or, or um, something like that. Oh my and gosh. I did not even know that you see, wow. You are the prompt engineer. <laughs> no, ChatGPT is. No, but I mean, <laughs> saying that, typing that to it. The the part that is crazy about this to me, and I don't know if you found this, but I'm at the point now where I'm talking, I'm literally talking to ChatGPT, like I'm having a face-to-face -face mm -hmm. conversation, which I don't, again, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I joked in the past that I'm very polite with it. Like I say, please and thank you, because I want it to remember, you know, one day when it takes over the world that I was one of the, the good yep. guys. But it's crazy how prompting to a degree really is having a conversation. Mm -hmm. you, you can take it one step further, too. If you're not even really sure what you want to talk about, you can instruct chat GPT to ask you questions and at the end summarize what that conversation was and then you can kind of see where where your mind was thinking and leaning towards and so then, you're using it as a brainstorming buddy at that point mm -hmm. yeah I, I mean honestly i use it for a little bit of everything um and so with a social media post what i would do is if i've already written it for example i know that i want to post an image on instagram and I want to be cheeky about my need for coffee. 
right? I'm going to write the text that I want to go with it. And I'll just tell chat GPT, if I post this on Instagram, can you generate an image that will go with it? And it'll give me one. And it did. And so um, you're writing what your, what your Instagram caption would be. Yes. And then asking it to build. So the reverse engineering then. So let's mm -hmm. say you wanted to write a LinkedIn post about a very specific aspect of your voiceover business. You could potentially ask it, have it to create an image based off of what would correspond with this LinkedIn post or copy that I've written. Yes. Gosh, that's crazy. Yes. Oh. So that's, that's the main way that I do it is I'm like, I'm going to let chat GPT tell me what kind of image should go with this. And then I'll iterate from there, right? Like with that coffee example, the image that it gave me was a really great foundation, but it was all in browns because it's coffee. And so it made right. everything kind of neutral and brown. And I was like, no, I'm feeling really happy today. Let's make this brighter. And so then it generated something full of blues and pinks and oranges. And I loved it, but it featured a male character and I'm not a dude. So I said, this is great, but can you please feature a female instead? And it regenerated the image. And that third time I found it perfect. And that's the one that I used. That was one of the things that I didn't understand early on. I would write a prompt. I wouldn't get the results that I'd want. So I would start over again. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that you could reiterate inside of it, like with ChatGPT inside of that, what do you call it? That conversation, but you mm -hmm. can okay, that was good, but let's change this. And then it'll do it again. Okay, I like that, but can we do this? Oh, that was good. Can we try it more in this style or with this direction or using the, this color palette or whatever? And so you can continually build and iterate until you get to where you want to be with, with the image. And I, I, that was something that I was not really aware that you could do originally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a big difference. It's been a game changer for me is that reiteration. I also find I'm... I'm a better editor than creator. And so it's yes. easy for me to take what it created and say, oh, here are the things that I want changed. That makes sense because, so I'm working with a graphic designer right now on a rebrand of the VOpreneur logo. And this poor woman, God bless her. She's been so patient with me because I don't know what I want. And so I, you know, I talked to her a little bit about the brand kind of kind of explain a little bit about what I'm, you know, the, the the feel or the vibe that I want the logo to have. And I just keep hoping that she's going to drop a proof in front of me and I'm going to be, yes, that that's what I wanted. And then we can go from there. Mm -hmm. But getting to that point, like I said, God bless her. I don't understand why she hasn't fired me yet because I got to be one of the most frustrating people to work with. So what you just said, you know, I, I'm a better editor than a creator that totally resonates with me. If I can get it to give me the initial image that's starting me down a path, then I can, from there, I'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, I like this part, I don't like this part, this part's okay, and then you can start to change and iterate until you build exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, that's so smart too, that's so smart. So reverse engineering prompts, that's a great tip, mm -hmm. giving it, uh, you know, getting it to generate them for you. I love the idea of I wanna create a post so maybe that's the next step is you, I want to create a LinkedIn post about this back aspect of my voiceover business, and then you get it to write the post for you. And then once it's written the post for you, then you use it to generate the image that goes right along with it. Now you're completely outsourcing mm -hmm. all of those aspects of your marketing, which for some voice actors, I mean, if that's, if it's the creation side that hangs up so many people from doing social media, which that is a big part of it. This is where you use these tools for brainstorming buddies, for ideation and, and, and mm -hmm. building from there and understanding the prompts. I've actually recently subscribed to a couple of newsletters that send out prompt tips every day because that's, I get it. That's, mm -hmm. that's what you got to get in order to be able to use these and not just for image generation, that's across the board. Any of this stuff that you want it to, to work on or, or create for you, it's all about the prompts. There's a Facebook group that's all about chat GPT prompts for business use. Right. Here, here are prompts that will help you do your business related things. And I find watching other people and seeing what their prompts are. One, it teaches me new things to use GPT for that I didn't ever consider. Mm -hmm. And two, it helps me make better prompts. 
because I yep. can see what they're doing and what they're generating. You shared a prompt in the mastermind mm -hmm. for how you created one of those images. Would you, would you be willing to share a prompt that you've created? I just, I want people to fully understand because I know not everybody understands the prompting side of things. So I would love for you to share one of your prompts so that they can hear what really goes into it, how specific, how thorough that you can get. Like I was talking to Firefly and I'm like, just when I was playing around and I'm like, create a, a, a voiceover booth with a man with a dark <laughs> five o'clock shadow standing in front of a fancy high-end microphone, you know, whatever. So like, and, and it, it's crazy how much you can get out of it the better that the prompts are and the more detailed that the prompts are. So would you be willing to share sure. a prompt that you've created? Sure. Um, I can give you the prompt for um, an image that I actually used with a LinkedIn post not too long okay. ago. Um, and again, this is, this is a prompt that came after lots of iterations, but this is the prompt that generated the final image that I used. Um, a side view of a confident, female e-learning voiceover narrator. Her medium length bob hairstyle is brown with teal highlights. Captivatingly speaking into a high quality microphone on her desk, her charm and charisma fill the scene. The background is a vibrant and modern collage of e-learning elements, such as a computer screen with multiple tabs, a smartphone, a tablet, or a whiteboard covered in notes. The atmosphere combines professionalism with warmth, inviting viewers into the virtual learning experience. Wow. That like you're literally painting a picture. You're verbally mm -hmm. you're verbally painting the picture. This is where it's gonna be. This is where I'm gonna use this image generation side of things. Is I come up with ideas for social media posts all the time, and a big part of the time that I spend is trying to find the right image to go with mm -hmm. it. Yep. And I usually have a pretty good idea in my head of what I want that image to be. But searching through the stock photography, going through Pixabay, going through Canvas library, whatever, trying to find the exact right image is incredibly time consuming. And sometimes it's incredibly frustrating. But when you know exactly what you want the image to look like mm -hmm. and you give it a prompt like you just did, like the amount of detail that was in that prompt, but then it creates exactly what you want. And it does it in seconds, which is the other thing that blows my mind. It does. It does. I... I have spent so many hours doing this, Mark. I will tell you that, that the iterating can be the rabbit hole time suck because you are just trying so hard to get that perfect image and you're just tweaking little things here and there. And eventually you just have to say, this is the image I'm going to use. This is Otherwise you will be sitting there for hours. We are not creating a, you know, magazine cover for Time Magazine. You know, I'm creating a, a graphic to go on my Instagram or my LinkedIn. Like there's good enough. Is, there's it comes a point where good enough is good enough, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But it's so much fun to, to think about what's possible with it. But I, I'm glad. Thank you for sharing the post or the prompt, because I think that's where for people that have played around with AI and not again, not just on the image generation side, just playing around with chat GPT and finding that it doesn't work or, you know, I didn't think the content was that great or whatever. When you hear a prompt, like what you just shared, that's when you realize, Oh, that's why I didn't get what I was looking for. Cause I didn't go nearly deep enough into it. I mean, I've been using, I've been creating content for a YouTube channel and I've been doing these weather shorts. So, you know, my initial prompt was to write me a 45 second script about a strange weather phenomenon um, that I can share in a video on YouTube or something like that. And it spits out the script. But then I was like, you know what? Make it in the style of uh, a PBS, like PBS Nova. And mm -hmm. it rewrote it in a totally, completely different way. And then I said, you know, okay, that was good. Let's try it again. But as if this were going to air on Discovery Channel. And it did it again. It rewrote the script in a totally different way. And it, those subtle little changes make mm -hmm. such a big difference. But then now I've got a script that I can just walk into the booth and narrate. Now where the next level comes in is I've been searching for all the stock video and the stock images to, to create those shorts. 
now I get to play around with some of the stuff that you've talked about. And because, you know, one of the videos I did was on Thundersnow. Well, guess what? There's not a lot of stock video on Thundersnow. <laughs> There's not a lot of stock <laughs> photography on Thundersnow. Mm -hmm. But I could see now that's where AI image generation could potentially come in and, and getting it to create, you know, typing out that prompt and getting it to create that image that you could use. Have you played around with video at all? Not really. I started looking um, after our mastermind group because you were talking about it. And I did find uh, one tool that does have some free time. Because when you're looking at video, it's it's how many minutes is it going to yep. generate for you? Yep. And I found one called Flixi, F-L-I-K-S-I, -I, I think. Okay. And um, it did pretty good text to video. Um, and I have seen some things that have been done really, really well, but the, the ones that I have seen have been kind of prototypes, not available to the general public yet. Yep. Um, but I think that particularly when GPT-5 comes out this summer, I think it's going to have video. I don't know that that's for sure. That's, that's a speculation sore, sore, I have. right? Yes, it is. You're right. Okay. You're right. So it might, yeah, I, I, I would be very curious. I would be surprised actually, maybe it doesn't give us access to that whole thing at this point, but I would be mm -hmm. surprised if there wasn't some sort of, of, uh, image generation or video create generation in there. And that was one of the podcasts that I mentioned earlier that I was listening to today, talking about different tools It talked about some of the different video, uh, text to video that are, that are starting to, to come out. Most of them right now, it sounds like are much better at shorter kind of b-roll type video so you know five or ten second clips or something like that but i mean when you're creating something that like a faceless youtube channel mm -hmm. I'm, I'm compiling a bunch of five second clips of different scenes and, and putting it into uh into one video so having the ability to create something like that would be really cool but so let's uh talk about and I think you've touched on a little bit, but just talk about a couple of the different ways that you've been using some of this AI image generation in, in marketing your voiceover business. Cause that's what I want people to understand is there's, there's tools that are out there that can help you to do some of these things that you're not doing or, or that you're avoiding or that maybe you're doing, but you just want to do better. So mm -hmm. how have you used this to, to kind of level up some of the things that you've been doing? The first thing that I did, the very first image that I generated for um, my voiceover was I took a photo of myself. It was a selfie that I had taken of me in my booth with my headphones on and you could see my roadcaster in the background with the pretty lights. And I uploaded it and said, turn this into a cartoon. And it gave me several different styles. One of them I absolutely fell in love with and it's now my profile picture in several That's places. Awesome. And I knew that I wanted my website to be redesigned and to feature this character. Unfortunately, I couldn't get ChatGPT to give me consistent images, even when I fed that image back in and said, do this again, but with different clothes. Like it couldn't quite do that. It would change the style or it would change the face. Um, but I was able to take that first image and give it to an artist and say, can you generate original art based on this character? And so that's the first thing that I did, which is not all AI, but it started with AI. But it started with AI. Yep. Um, and then other things that I've done, particularly with image generation, has been social media posts, um, threads, Instagram, Blue Sky, LinkedIn. Um, and it's surprisingly really good at knowing the different tones from the different platforms. Basically, like it okay, knows yeah. that LinkedIn is more professional and yep. it's let's talk this really casual kind of perky, let's put exclamation points on everything for blue sky, right? Um, so that's, that's, that's the primary way that I use it. Um, the other thing that I do is a combination of the two is I actually went onto chat GPT and I said, okay, these are the platforms that I wanna post on. Give me a schedule for when I should post on all of these platforms repurposing content between them and it gave me that schedule i had to give it my content pillars and and what i want my posts to be about and then it could kind of schedule out when things make sense to talk about next to each other and post um, within the same time frame and it's just chat gpt is my virtual assistant does that every like it does everything for me as long yeah. as 
I ask it the right questions. That's it. And and I have found that. I have used it. I, I wouldn't say that I've used it at this point. I haven't, I haven't really found any. There's been no copy and paste type content. But what it's been awesome at is getting me started or moving me in a direction. I'm like, okay, I can take that and go from there. Mm-hmm. I can take that concept and I can write something around it. I can take that idea and I can expand it out further. And that's been really, really good for me because it's hard coming up with ideas on a consistent mm-hmm. basis, a daily basis. It's it's really hard. So one final question, and, and I don't know if you know the answer to this or not, but I'm I'm curious. Are there any negative ramifications of using some of this AI created content as far as do you know if social media platforms are flagging or is Google downgrading in SEO or anything? Or have you heard of anything like that? I've seen um, some chatter about Google potentially flagging AI content, but I think it's in the context of like those, you had mentioned faceless YouTube accounts where it's the same thing. It's just the words are slightly different and that's all it ever is. Right. Um, it's clearly that it's, you know, low effort, just copy and paste. I think that's where it's trying to flag some things. Um, and the terms and conditions of most of these, are particularly with image generation, you have the rights to use the photo or the graphic or whatever that you created. Um, Usually not commercially, but again, read your terms and conditions. Don't sell your soul. Like they try to get you to do sometimes. But I think that as long as you're using the image with real content, you don't have anything to worry about. Yeah. Like if it's a real post on LinkedIn, it's an actual Instagram post, it's an actual YouTube video. Like if you do get, um, you know, your thunder snow video. Yeah. AI generated, but you're narrating on top of it, that's real content that you have generated. And so I think in those cases, you probably don't have anything to worry about. Now, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice or anything like that. <laughs> It'll be, it's, it's curious. It's, I'm curious to see what happens with it though, because it is one of the things that at some point somebody's going to have to create some rules around, mm-hmm. right? Because there's using this AI generated content for, um, well, for good and for bad, right? Like really that's, that's what it comes down to. Uh, you know, there's using it as a supplement to the marketing and the efforts that you're already putting in. And then there's using it in an attempt to mislead or, or whatever. And those are different scenarios, but that's where rules will ultimately come in. But I'm excited to continue to play around with it. I don't know when I'm going to find the time to, but like I said, I, the other day I had uh, a couple different windows of, of AI image generators open and I was typing in identical prompts just to see what would, you know, Mm -hmm. what does Canva spit out? What does Firefly spit out or, you know, playing around with some of these. So we'll, we will link to all the different ones that you, you mentioned uh, in the show notes. So if anybody wants to go and and play, uh, look, this is, this is technology that can help you to increase your productivity. It's technology that can help you to be more consistent and uh, potentially technology that's going to help you to up the quality uh, depending on what you're doing as well. And I would love to be able to, uh, maybe in the show notes, we'll, we'll include the side-by-side of the picture of your headshot and the, mm. the image that it created. Cause I, sure. that was, it was, did a really great job of it. I thought it was really neat. So Mandy, thank you so much for coming on and, and talking about some of this stuff and answering some of these questions. Cause I mean, I know it's going to be helpful for me. So maybe my, my, my purposes were slightly selfish, but I'm sure there's some other people who are going to learn a lot from this as well. And I mean, I, I took notes, I took notes, so I'm, I'm happy. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for asking me on it. I, I love talking about this stuff just because it's fun. It is It's a lot of fun. It really is. All right. Thanks, Mandy.